On the 7th of February 2017, this woman, Spiwum Landisangoza, the tent from Baitbridge, where she had gone to buy goods for resale. She lived at number 1918 Island in Imganwini, Bolawayo. She lived at her house with a 23 year old son, Nelson, and as soon as she arrived, she realized that a bulk of her clothing was missing from her wardrobe. Since it was only the two of them at the house, she knew that he probably had something to do with it. She initially thought maybe he had sold the clothes for money, but when she questioned him he told her that he wanted her out of the house so he had discarded of her clothing when she asked the neighbors the neighbors confirmed that they had seen nelson carrying a bunch of clothes that he discarded in a bush near their street when she returned home she then confronted her son about it and told him that she was going to send him back to ingocheni mental hospital nelson was infuriated by this and spent the entire day contemplating the dread of going back to a mental hospital spiwa then called her sister rolo Gwenzi, who also resided in Bulawayo and told her to come over that she had something important to discuss with her. As soon as Spiwa got off the phone with her sister, she was viciously attacked by Nelson with a crowbar until she died. As soon as Nelson saw that his mother was no longer alive, he wrapped her body in a blanket, carried it to her bedroom and hid it under the bed to conceal the murder. He then locked the house and casually walked off as if nothing had happened. When Spiwa's sister arrived at the house at around 12 p.m., she then called for her sister but there was no response. She tried to open the door, but the door was locked. When she peeped through the window, that's when she saw splatters of blood. She was immediately afraid, so she decided to go to her daughter-in-law's house who lived nearby so that she could assist her in getting into the house to see what had happened. When the daughter-in-law arrived and saw the blood through the window, she was also afraid, so they had to approach male neighbors who came and broke into the house, searched the perimeter, and discovered Spiwa's lifeless body under her bed. They also found the murder weapon, the crowbar, in his room, and it was immediately evident that Nelson had something to do with the murder of his mother. His shoe prints was all over the crime scene, but he was nowhere to be found. Since there was no doubt that Nelson had done this, given the evidence of the crime scene. The police's main objective was to find out what the motive was. They quickly found out that he had a history of mental illness that had begun four years prior and that he had even been a patient at Inguchini Mental Hospital for a while. This explains why when they were having a confrontation, his mother had threatened to send him back. It is said that when he would have these episodes of mental illness, they would take about one to two days to stabilize. The neighbors also confirmed that he had become violent a few days before and even attempted to attack the neighbor's daughters who ran into the house and locked the screen door so he could not enter. Spiwa's body was then carried to UBH where a post-mortem was conducted by Dr. Pesanai on the 8th of February in 2017. The results revealed that she had died from subarachnoid hemorrhage and blunt force trauma as a result of the assault. The police then began a manhunt for Nelson but they could not find him for two full days. He randomly and surprisingly showed up at his mother's funeral two days later and he had no idea where his mother was was. He kept asking his relatives where his mother was and he seemed to have no idea of what he had done. He was then captured by the police and arrested and charged with murder. He was then sent for psychiatric evaluation at Mnondolozi Special Institute and he was examined by Dr. Nema Mawere on the 7th of October 2017. Dr. Mawere's results revealed that there was a possibility that when he attacked his mother, he was having a schizophrenic episode. This means that he had no appreciation of the wrongfulness of his actions. He, however, found him fit to stand trial. The court was satisfied by evidence presented that it was indeed Nelson that had murdered his mother, but he was mentally disabled, so could not be held responsible for his actions. He was then found not guilty by reason of insanity. The judge then ordered him to be sent back to prison pending transfer to a mental institution for treatment. This case is a sober reminder that when we live with people that have a history of mental illness, they must always be checked regularly. May her soul continue to rest in eternal peace.